Hey photographers, today I'm going to focus on focus. You want crystal clear and sharp images? Let me go over the settings that will help you achieve that. Now I'm demonstrating with the Fuji X-T2, you'll see why later. And while it's easy to say this is similar on other cameras, the reality is that while the concepts are the same, the terms each brand uses can be different. I'm going to cover the basic features. Many cameras can do more. So let's start with the lens, which has limitations. Although pretty much all lenses will focus far off into infinity, the closest distance is a finite number. This Fuji 16 to 55 lens can focus as close as 30 centimeters. And that distance can change as you zoom in. Now, if you want to focus very close, you'll need a macro lens. Most of the time, you'll want to use the autofocus. It's not perfect, but it's generally the easiest solution. And we'll get to manual later. Autofocus has two basic settings. Mode, which governs the how, and area, which governs the where. Mode first. This can be a menu setting, but it's also often a switch on the front of the camera. And there are usually three settings, sometimes with variations. One mode is single. When you press the shutter button halfway, it focuses. The second is continuous. So if the subject moves while you're holding the button halfway, it refocuses. The third position is manual. And then you use a ring on the lens to change the focus. Although there are some cameras and some lenses where you use an on-screen control. Many cameras have a focus mode that's dedicated to faces, often with eye detection. Sometimes you can specify the eye. For portraits or photos with people, that's the setting that I'd use. A face detect may not be with the other focus modes, so you may have to consult the manual for that one. Then area, which selects where the camera looks for an object to focus on. Areas can be large or small, and could often be moved around the screen. Sometimes the area covers the whole screen, which lets the camera choose what to focus on, and that is usually the closest object. Now, depending on your camera's features, you'll be able to move the focus point in various ways. Now, it's lovely to have touch, which makes it simple, particularly if the monitor screen also works as a touch pad while you're using the viewfinder. Less convenient, but slightly more direct, is a joystick to move the focus point around the screen. This is good mostly because it's dedicated. Although the control pad is usable for moving the focus point, first you'll have to switch it to the mode where it is moving the focus point. Now, what do you do? The simplest and most common focus technique is to keep the focus area in the center to point the square at your subject, and then half press to set the focus. The camera provides a signal to let you know it is focused. Hold your finger in the half press position while you recompose the shot, and then press all the way to take the shot. Now this camera focuses with a single confident transition to the new focus point, using a technology called phase detect. The older technology, contrast detect, tends to wobble until it gets to focus, but it can be more accurate. And if you're buying a new camera, look for phase detect. Neither system is entirely foolproof, particularly with low light levels. And some cameras have hybrid systems that combine the two, or use one for certain situations or areas of the screen, and the other for the remainder. Now, you're likely used to half pressing the shutter button to focus, but most cameras have a secondary button that is dedicated to, or can be customized to focus, a setting usually called AF-ON. Some lenses have AF-ON buttons. That's really handy. So press the AF-ON button and the camera focuses. Photographers who use this technique, usually called back focus, also stop the shutter button from focusing. That's an option you'll find in the menu. The advantage of back focus is that you can focus once and then start shooting without waiting for the camera to refocus with each shutter press, 
which may accidentally inadvertently focus on something else. Press again when the object changes its distance to the camera. Now I find it difficult to switch between these two modes. I sometimes pick up the camera and wonder why it's not focusing. Back focus. A trip through your camera's menu will reveal your camera's other focus options like release or focus priority. Or in continuous mode, how quickly the autofocus reacts when it sees a new subject in the frame. Following and focusing on moving objects is a challenge and one of the areas where camera manufacturers are continuing to compete with new features and faster response. Focus tracking features where you can select an object and have the camera follow it with focus can be hard to master. So practice before the big game, race, or competition. And don't despair if your camera doesn't. Set the focus point where you want your subject in the frame, and then using continuous focus with the back, back focus button held down, press the shutter at the decisive moment. Sometimes, no matter what you do, the camera won't find the subject you want in focus. Manual focus is the solution. You set the focus point with a ring on the lens. Some lenses have distance markings on the lens, some display the distance on screen. Most lenses, particularly those with autofocus, use a method called focus by wire. The focus ring turns without any detents or stops. If you turn quickly, it changes fast. Turn slowly, it changes by smaller amounts. Now some lenses, like this Fuji 16mm lens, have a focus clutch. Pull the ring and distance markings appear. And when you turn it, the ring stops at its closest and farthest distance. Those two features, mark distance and define travel, are very useful for video. And with manual focus, you need some kind of assist to help, as the viewfinder or monitor on the back of the camera is rarely good enough for precise focus adjustments. Many cameras provide an expanded view as soon as you turn the focus ring, but sometimes you have to activate it. Now Fuji, thanks for waiting for this, uniquely provides three different focus assists for manual shooters. In addition to expanded view, there's digital split image, which will be familiar to pre-digital photographers, as well as focus peak highlight. Focus peaking shows the edges of the subject that's in focus. The camera will usually let you select the color and the sensitivity. Peaking is often used by video shooters. Then don't expect all of the focus features you find in the still mode to be available in video and with all of the video settings. On a DSLR, that applies to stills in live view as well. Now, if both the camera and the subject are fairly static in a video, I prefer manual focus. Although recently the continuous autofocus systems on sun cameras are stable enough to use with videos. Otherwise, the camera may be doing small but noticeable focus adjustments while you're recording. You don't want that. And on not all lenses can maintain focus if you zoom while you're recording video. Lenses with this capability are called parfocal, a feature that's particular to cinema and video lenses. In a video, you may want to change the focus from one person or object to another while you're recording, a technique called rack focus. Again, much easier with touch. Now, I can't finish this without going back to exposure and aperture. The smaller the aperture, the larger the F number, the larger the depth of field. So if your subject is going in and out of focus too easily, a larger F-stop can help but it's the smaller f-stops that give you an out-of-focus background. Oh, one more thing. Focus stacking. When the object is close, the depth of field is often very shallow. So for close-ups of small objects, you may find that very little is in focus. So by taking multiple images where the focus changes slightly until you have an image where each section is in focus, those images can be stacked or combined in Photoshop to create a single image where the whole object is in focus. And lately, some cameras, Panasonic, Nikon, and others, are incorporating this feature. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope this helps. 
Remember to keep shooting until your battery is empty and your memory card is full. One more click, please like. Questions and comments below. I do reply to all relevant questions and civil comments. And if you have one more click, there's the subscribe button.